What's up, guys? It's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down Trevor Lawrence's pro day. We're going to be talking about these three throws. We're going to be talking about how you guys can improve on the run, throwing to your weak side and to your front side, and then how you guys should be when you're in the pocket, how you guys can be more accurate back there, and what your base should look like. So this video will give you guys a lot of value in terms of just QB mechanics and how to throw the ball well, but also, guys, I want to talk to you about something we just started offering on my website to improve your arm strength in 10 days. If you check out that very first link in the description, you'll get info on how you can get access to this 45-minute long video about a 10 10 day step by step process all based around arm strength. So we give you the specific drills that you need to improve your arm strength but also the specific exercise that you can do in the gym and all the technical points to improve your arm strength. Again, very first link in the description. Hope we can get you guys on that soon. Let's get started. So this first throw here is going to be like this boot left concept, hitting this guy clear in the field. Let's watch the thing again full speed. So when he's coming out here, we really want to focus on just the sequence of his throw on the run. I think this is something that so many people struggle with, especially throwing to their left side that um and it gets torque, right? So a lot of people, what they like to do is they'll either rotate their shoulders a little too early or they'll load their shoulders too early, then they separate, right? So you see when Lawrence goes to throw right here, when he goes to throw, he takes this ball back. He's rotating with his shoulders. It's all about separating your upper half and your lower half, okay? So I think that's something that... um a lot of guys don't necessarily, they know what it is, they know the terms, they know the words like dissociation, but they don't know exactly what that means when it comes to throwing on the run, right? So when you step with your throwing side leg, that's like a way that you can load your hips at the target, okay? So what you don't want to do is you don't want to step and you don't want to rotate your shoulders off of your left leg. You see how he steps with his right leg and when his right leg is getting in the ground, that's when you load your shoulders back. That's that separation because you look how his hips are stepping there, his hips are driving there, but his shoulders are going back. Now the thing about that is that's going to be that coil when you kick your left leg through or your non-throwing side through. And you're going to see what I'm talking about here, right? So he rotates back. And now when your front foot gets down or necessarily your throwing side foot, when that's in the grass, your front shoulder should be loaded, right? You don't want to be opened up. You don't want to be spread at 90. Like you don't want to be 90 and then 90 with your front shoulder coming open as your right foot hits the ground because then you're going to end up pushing the ball because everything is open to the target, right? You want to be closed off as you step with that right leg. That's the goal. That's what we want to try to get to because that's what will get your hips there and that's what will create that slingshot so you see now when he kicks through with the left leg it's like that arm comes through at the same time and his hips are already coming through his hips are already to the target this is trailing his back hip and that left leg is kind of serving for control right because what you don't want to do what a lot of people do is they'll step and they'll rotate on this right leg they'll rotate the shoulders they step with this right leg but their left leg will kick out here their left leg will kick across you want to try to kick that leg straight at the throw like almost like you're running down like a little hallway like you're running down a hallway and you have to throw on the run you're not going to be able to bail out and go because you're going to hit a wall. You're not going to be able to come across your frame because you'll hit a wall. You want to treat it like you're going just down this hallway, especially on like a bootleg opportunity or a boot where it's like blocked up. You know what I mean? When it's an escape scenario, it's a little bit different story. The technique's a little bit different, but especially when it's a bootleg or design sprint out where you have time, it's blocked up, you could attack the target. We want to try to act like we're going straight down like a hallway almost. That's how we want to play this thing, okay? So again, rotating the shoulders as this leg comes through. Now, how I can be accurate with a lot of people do at this point when they kick the leg through is they'll pull the elbow down, which makes the release gets pushed high. Or what they'll do is they'll pull their shoulder and their hips and, and everything will go towards the sideline. A lot similar to that leg kick that we were talking about, but some people will just open up their upper half and bail out. That's when your arm flies outside of your frame because your body's split down a midline, right? So if your front side swings open, your right side's going to do something pretty similar but the opposite. So if your front side swings open to the left, your arm's going to fly and your arm's going to be coming across your frame. So Lawrence does a great job here of staying square, keeping that hand by his face so his release point isn't affected and staying smooth so we can make an accurate shot on this throw. Let's watch this thing again, full speed. Now again, mind you, this is all t-shirt, shorts work. There's no pass rush, no defense. However, it's good to look at the mechanics of this so you guys can learn from this, 100%. So you see when he comes off here, bootleg again, close those shoulders on that right leg step, throwing side leg step. For all you lefties, it would be your left leg. That's when you rotate your shoulder. Now we're watching this coming back front side. Now some people, honestly, um, this is a common thing. I know me personally, this is how I feel, and I know a lot of quarterbacks that I work with feel the same way. It's a harder throw they feel when you're throwing to your front side because you already feel like your shoulders are there. So sometimes guys take that for granted and don't necessarily rotate all the way with their front shoulder, so they end up pushing the ball and they're not as consistent. While as throwing to the left side off a of bootleg sprint out escape scenario, they really have to rotate their shoulders so they're more comfortable with it, right? So that's something that I want to stress to you guys. 
especially throwing to your right side, or if you're a lefty, your left side, throwing to your strong side. You want to make sure that we treat it the exact same. You treat it the same sequence with your front, with your throwing side foot. You treat it the same sequence with your shoulders so we can create that torque and we can let that thing pop off my hand, okay? So you see when Lawrence comes off here again, play action, pulls this thing to his stomach, I snap around, let's go attack this target, right? So we're getting downhill and you see again, where's he going? It's like he's down a tight little hallway right here. He's not stepping and he's not letting his hips bail out this way. That's what people like to do on this one. They'll step right here with the throwing side leg and then this leg kick will kick and it'll go towards the sideline but you see how Lawrence stays on that straight path down the throw you want to keep your hips and your shoulders parallel to the target because that will help with that consistent release point it'll help with you keeping that front shoulder square it'll keep it help you keep that front hand not necessarily tight to your frame but almost in front of your face so you don't pull your elbow down which will affect your release point right you guys want to make sure that we stay square to the target the entire way throughout the throw and especially if it's a bootleg we square it up we go run at the target but now if there were a situation where like let's say he had to make a move and he had to escape out and run towards the sideline and he was getting chased right it would be the same mechanics you would just make sure that you step with your throwing side foot that's when you rotate your shoulders you get that throwing side foot emphasize kicking it at the target rather than kicking towards the sideline because that's where your momentum is going it's all about being able to control your momentum especially because you're on the run you're running fast you're going up you got to get out of the pocket you got to get there but you also got to let the play develop you want to make sure that we control that momentum and how we control that momentum is that throwing side foot stepping in the direction of the target. That's what we got to think about. Step in the direction of the target, kick the leg through in the direction of the target, and then we should be a little bit more accurate and just make sure that we don't bail out. We don't stop my feet because then I stop my momentum. I just kick that leg through and stay on the run right in the direction of the throw. That's a very mechanically sound throw on the run by Lawrence. Watch this thing again full speed one more time. So coming off here, make sure we attack him, rotating on that right leg step, and then drive this ball. So now we're going to be looking at this throw from the pocket here okay so now the reason why i have people have been asking me this since um the college football season I, I think lawrence is one of the best prospects to come out of the draft um and obviously i'm not a draft expert or anything like that i'm just a private coach but the, I, I just think the way he sits back there in the pocket is nfl like right you, you haven't seen a guy come out of um of college in a long time like e even the guys who are dominating today you see Josh Allen Josh Allen what you look at the difference from when he was coming out of um high, of college into what he's in the league now is his base you see him at Wyoming his feet are just super close together he's got a narrow base which is why he had a long stride which is what brought those inconsistencies but now you watch him with the Bills and you see his base is wide he's got a nice strong base he looks like an NFL quarterback you know what I mean like that's those are the things that you look for in guys right so now again you watch Lawrence back here you look at his base he looks like an NFL base. He's got that quick stride. He drives the ball. This ball finishes with energy. He's not loading up on the throw. Because you see how when he goes to throw, here's so many quarterbacks. And an, an example of this, if you guys um, are real into the draft this year, look at, look at Trey Lance's film and then compare it to Lawrence's film and look at their base. And you see when Trey Lance throws, and no knock on him. He's, I hope he's a great quarterback. I'm not trying to say anything like that. But it's like that wasted motion doesn't fly at the next level. And that goes from high school to college. That goes from youth ball to high school. There's always that like game speed change right and it's always about cutting out wasted motion especially at the quarterback position so you see how when Lawrence throws like his base is already preloaded he's already loaded he's already ready to go he doesn't have to load down it's just a drive he's got that quick trigger with his upper half and he could just drive off that back leg it's twitchy that's like what the industry calls it right so when Lance has to throw what he'll do is when he gets ready to throw he dips down on the back leg. and I'm sure he's working on it because obviously I'm not the only one who could see this so it's like it's not a dip down and a load, and he doesn't bring the ball up to his ear. He doesn't load his front shoulder. It's just he's preloaded, ready to go the whole time. And that's something that that's just smooth. It's just smooth like that. I I don't know if that's necessarily that's something that I try to teach, and a lot of guys may have an easier time with it than other guys. Other guys just lo they need to load up for that split second, but that split second makes us late. And as you get older and older and older, those windows get smaller and smaller and smaller. And especially if you're at the level that Lawrence is going to play at, and I think play well at, those windows are going to be tiny. Right? Right? So you don't have time to load up and prepare for the throw. It's just about being able to drive and get it out. Right, like He's going through progressions in the pocket. His base is just there so he can just drive. Front stride is down fast. That's something that you see all NFL quarterbacks have. None of them have that long stride. It's just a quick little stride. It's almost like you're just turning it over right in the grass. Because what happens is that when you could have your front shoulder closed, like or loaded, I should say, or quiet, as some people like to call it, front foot down, front shoulder loaded on the target, that's a position where we could generate torque and have that slingshot. Because now he 
can drive through with his hips. And you see how his hip is coming through before the ball. They call that chasing the hip. You want the football to chase your hip. And that's how we generate torque. And if we stay square with my shoulders, square with my hips at the target, we could drive this ball. That's a, that's a great, great shot right there. A lot of velocity. And again, I know this is t-shirt and shorts, but you watch him play, um, throughout the season, right? It's just that base is there. He's got that, he's got that look to him that like a pocket passer should look, right? That's what you guys want to be shooting for, especially if you're at the high school level and you want to play college, especially if you're the youth level and you want to be a successful high school quarterback so you can get to the college level because I assume that's everybody's goal. That's the base that you guys got to have. You watch film over and over on guys and they just don't have that load up. It's just a quick trigger because wasted motion will kill us at the quarterback positions. Watch the thing again, full speed. So again, good base, just drive. Balls out of his hands, quick trigger. That's a great shot by Lawrence. All right, guys, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, please leave those in the comments. And also, guys, if you want to get a stronger arm and you want to be able to have a 10-day step-by-step process that will help you add distance to your deep ball, more velocity on your throws, check out that very first link in the description. Um, it'll give you more info on it. I'll see you guys next time.